and congressional leadership is demanding answers, the Congressional Oversight Committee in particular, after the failed assassination attempt, a very close call against Donald Trump. The Senate Homeland Security Committee as well now as the House Oversight and Homeland Security Committees are launching investigations looking for explanations of this failure to protect the former president. Joining me now is Congressman Anthony Diaz-Cito, a Republican from New York, member of Homeland Security Committee. And I know uh, you're all not back in session until next week to hold hearings, but I, I would presume that some staff work could be done. And I don't know if you're joining us from Long Island. Are you in Milwaukee? Uh, uh, bring me up to date on what you have done and what questions you want answered. Yeah, I, I am in Milwaukee get ready to uh, head over the beginning of the convention. Um, but uh, yeah, over the last couple of days, the Homeland Security Committee under the leadership of Chairman Mark Green uh, has been in constant communication, discussing um, and uh, mapping out a plan of how uh, we are going to address this when we return back to the Hill uh, next Monday. I know that uh, there's been requests sent uh, for some of the uh, higher ranking officials from the Secret Service to appear in front of the committee. Uh, we, just like many others, are waiting for information of how uh, Saturday night's assassination attempt unfolded. As uh, someone who has spent a career in law enforcement, I think it's critically important to make sure that you have all the facts before uh, we begin to point fingers and make assumptions. Uh, it's one of the reasons as to why, uh, after an incident like this, you need to review the after action report uh, so that you could really get an idea and an understanding and, and obviously have all the information to begin to ask the tough questions as to how this happened. And I also want to ask you about the, the other huge story that is breaking the decision by Judge Cannon on the classified documents case, which is questioning something that we thought was settled law for the last 25 years, which is the authority uh, to appoint a special counsel or an independent prosecutor. Well, I think it's another step in the right direction for the Trump campaign and for us as Republicans to focus on the issues that matter most to the American people and put aside the what we've seen is just campaign rhetoric and the uh, weaponization of the justice system. Uh, I think now we want to come together as a unified front, unified. By the Republican Party, as we will start today, and again, focus on the issues that matter to the American people. Back in my district on Long Island, people are talking about the southern border. People are talking about uh, going into New York City each and every day, whether it's for work or education, uh, and dealing with the migrant crisis. People are talking about when they go to the store and the supermarket, how everything costs more. Those are the issues we want to talk about with the American people. For me, I represent one of the most Jewish districts uh, anywhere in this country, and uh, they want to talk about the posturing that Joe Biden and his administration has done to undermine the state of Israel and, and Prime Minister Netanyahu. So that's what I want to focus on. I, I want to focus on the issues that matter, the issues that are going to take us to the election, and quite frankly, the issues that are going to lead us to a, a victory for the White House and uh, not only maintaining the seats in the House, but growing our majority. Uh, of course, the White House would strongly disagree, and so would the protesters against Joe Biden, who do not think that he has undermined Bibi Netanyahu, who has been criticized for giving him um, a bear hug or a free pass, at least uh, in terms of the war in Gaza. When you have the highest ranking uh, elected Jew in the country uh, on the floor of the Senate, uh, undermining the state of Israel and calling for the removal of the prime minister. Uh, I would compare that to on uh, September 12, 2001, having a foreign leader uh, ask for the removal of President Bush. Well, it was that was Senator Schumer, of course, and that was disavowed by the White House. Um, just, I just want to make that clear. But do you think that the that former President Trump's call for unity, saying that he's rewriting his acceptance speech, as well as President Biden's call for cooling the rhetoric and his speech last night and what he said also on Saturday uh, and yesterday. Do you think that well, these calls do require a different kind of rhetoric from members of Congress on both sides? There have been yeah, listen, you know, I, I, elevated, I think that, uh, elevated rhetoric. I think that if, if we can uh, learn anything from what happened on Saturday evening and the uh, attempted assassination on President Trump, I hope that the rhetoric is turned down. Uh, but unfortunately, by the looks of, of my social media and other members of, of Congress, it doesn't seem that the rhetoric is, is slowing down or uh, taming anytime soon. But uh, I hope that uh, we see leadership from both President Trump and President Biden and that that rhetoric uh, does calm down in the near future. Congressman Anthony Diaz-Pesito, thank you. Appreciate it.
Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more, September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.